If you follow the manga industry regularly, then more likely than not, you have probably seen these type of avatars. Manga artists or mangakas use these to hide their identities. For example, in a clip where Inaki Gurai, the actor of Luffy, went to meet Oda, they censored his face with his avatar, a fish. Or in an interview with Kohei Horikoshi, the mangaka of My Hero Academia, he was wearing a mask on his face the entire time. I kinda get it for the not too popular artists, but why do artists like Oda want their identities hidden, even though their faces are already publicly available on the internet. I can already see the veteran fans rolling their eyes at this question, but being on Twitter, I have realized that a lot of more casual fans don't exactly know why this is the case, and I don't think it's a dumb question to ask. So I thought I'd put together a quick video explaining the various reasons why mangakas tend to hide their identities. Starting with separating the art from the artist, this practice works well for not only the artist but also the fans. From the artist's perspective, this allows the mangakas to not be chained with their personal opinions, connections, or just personality in general. You know, if a mangaka says or does something fucked up, they can always try to get away with it or at least go into a new industry and have a fresh start. For example, when Nabuhiro Watsuki, the mangaka of Rurouni Kenshin, got caught having over 100 videos of sexual sexualizing minors. And you know what were the repercussions he faced for this? A $1,500 fine and a few months of suspension from writing manga. And his sequel for Rurouni Kenshin is literally serializing in Jump Square. Now, obviously, it does not have to be this creepy all the time. Sometimes authors can escape from unrealistic expectations of fans. For example, Itagaki Paru, the manga of Beastars, hit the fact that she's the daughter of Baki's mangaka, Keisuke Itagaki, to avoid unnecessary comparisons. These expectations can also come from a mangaka's past work. For example, someone like Tsugumi Oba, the mangaka of Death Note, later created Platinum End, but it got terrible reviews and was crushed beneath the fans' expectations for not living up to the standards Tsugumi set himself. This also happened with Kishimoto, the mangaka of Naruto. In 2019, when he created Samurai 8, it got cancelled after just five volumes as, again, it couldn't live up to Naruto's standard. Once an author makes a big hit, all their preceding works will be subject to direct comparison with their best work. This is just a harsh truth mangakas have to cope with. That is why almost no mangaka have made more than one mega hit series in their careers. Togashi is obviously a different breed. Separating the art from the artist also allows the artist to explore different genres. Like the artist of Dr. Stone, Boichi, previously used to draw Daojinshi Hentai. Or again, Sugumi went from writing Death Note, a serious thriller, to writing Bakuman, a fun, chill manga based on mangakas. Or Horikoshi has publicly expressed how he wants to draw a horror manga after being done with MHA. Now let's look at how this practice benefits the fans. You know how there is a general stereotype that female artists can only make shoujo or romance manga and only male artists can make shonen manga. I don't agree with this notion. It's pretty stupid, lacking any sort of logical explanation. How does gender have anything to do with a human's creativity? But hey, it exists, so we gotta deal with it. And that is what female mangakas like Hiromi Arakawa, the creator of Full Metal Alchemist, have done. Hiromi wrote FMA under the pen name of Hiromu Arakawa, so the fans can think that the work they are reading is made by a male artist. The mangaka of Demon Slayer, Gautuge, is also rumored to be female, and she too has kept her identity a complete secret. This goes the other way around as well, by the way. Many male artists have used female pen names to write shoujo or romance manga. To escape these stupid stereotypes, many mangakas prefer having their name and gender hidden. This practice also helps fans to not feel guilty about liking a manga that is written by a horrible person. As mentioned earlier, when the Nabuhiro fiasco was made public, the entire Rurouni Kenshin fandom was split between people boycotting and dropping the series and some others not giving a damn about what kind of person made the art as long as the art itself is good. There are other reasons apart from this, like mangakas in general are pretty shy. When a story gets as popular and gathers a worldwide influence as One Piece, then with it comes a lot of fame. There are two kinds of fame. Active fame, which basically means you are the epicenter of everything. Your work goes hand in hand with you. You are the cover and sometimes the selling point of your work. Like JK Rowling with Harry Potter. People know you, love you and are excited about your future works. But mangakas generally go with passive fame. They want their work to become super popular, they want you to love their characters and world, but it should be limited 
limited only to the work. The fame shall not go on a personal level. They want to be conserved in their zone, creating characters, stories, and worlds, but they don't want to become the face of it. To put it simply, mangakas are artists, not celebrities. Most of them don't even want that fame. They just want to be left alone. They don't want people to easily get their personal information, even basic info like faces and names. You know how I mentioned Sugumi Oba's name multiple times throughout this video? Yeah, that's just a pen name. He made such a global phenomena and no one knows who he is. Now, of course, this is not me saying that every mangaka is a socially awkward introvert. Hajime Sayama, the creator of AOT, is very public about himself. He goes to fan conventions and interviews fairly regularly. But in general, mangakas tend to be more on the shy side. Since the mid-2010s, the manga and anime industry has seen a huge boost in popularity. Shows like Attack on Titan, MHA, One Punch Man, and more. These shows were not popular only in the small sphere of anime, but went beyond that to become mainstream in the entire world. This, as expected, brought in a huge variety of fans, some being a little toxic. Well, <laughs> Who am I kidding? The anime community is one of the most toxic and ungrateful communities. I know not all fans are bad, but a significant part is, and they are loud. There are many incidents of fans straight up giving death threats to the author or their close ones, because apparently they know more about a character than the one who wrote it. They have watched some TikToks and have seen an analysis video. How dare the author doesn't feed their stupid headcanon? They will hunt you down, they will curse you to death. We saw this with Asama for EOT sending. Ano for Evangelion send, Gege Akutami for doing a certain thing to a certain character in a certain chapter in Jujutsu Kaisen. And it's not like they don't see this shit. Trust me, they do and it does affect them. I mean, Asama genuinely teared up when all the fans praised his ending at a convention in America. I try not to cry. <laughs> This shows how much the negative backlash had an impact on him. Baseline is that some fans are genuinely horrible and just don't deserve anime and manga. So rather than dealing with all that, most mangakas choose to not be public at all. And that's about it. These were all the reasons I could think of. If I missed any, then do mention them in the comments. And I just hope that as time goes on, more authors get a little more open. Of course, this can only happen if we as a community change for the better. Be safe, be nice, and I'll see you guys the next time. Goodbye.